brighten up those dark mornings. Wheeler, Ollie, and Lecter. Mornings at the Cabin. Mornings at the Cabin, indeed. Uh, Wheeler and Ollie with you to start off your Friday morning. And um, not the note that we ever want to start off a Friday morning or any of these shows or any day, really. Um, and that, that is the, the lead story this morning uh, on cabinradio.ca. You can find it there or on the uh, Cabin Radio NWT Facebook page. Um, teacher at NJ McPherson, Steve Elms, passed away yesterday. And um, it's um, been kind of making its way uh, around the city. They let the kids know yesterday at the school. Uh, they've informed the parents and teachers, of course. And um, we have that story for you at uh, Cabin Radio. See, I want to get it. I, it's hard to do this in the first two minutes. I do want to get into it a little bit just because I had the pleasure of working with Steve over the last few years on the Nutcracker. We're doing the Nutcracker right now. So having him not there, or not having him there, I should say, last night was very strange. And, uh, there's some reflection. I feel that needs to be done. So we'll get into that a little bit as well. Um, it's not going to all be that, but uh, try to push on and have a, uh, a nice uh, Friday morning. It's beautifully warm. It's only minus nine this morning at 702 because apparently winter doesn't mean anything anymore. Um, yeah. I just want to say before we get into the music, yeah, our thoughts are with uh, everybody who yep. is heading into school today. Uh, I know for staff, particularly uh, dealing with that with the kids and with that absence is, is going to be a huge deal. So. Yep. Everybody here is thinking of everybody there. Of course, Absolutely. His family, well. uh, his family and uh, everybody that worked with him. A, a well-loved teacher. and um, Yeah. Huh. Not it's one to, of those mornings. It is and one of those mornings. Absolutely. Sorry for it. Absolutely. Um, but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll trudge on and we will, uh, we will bring you a, an entertaining morning show as we always try to do. Shooting from the hip, as always. Mornings at the Cabin, the podcast. Wheeler and Lecter with you on your Friday morning. Um, as Ollie and I kind of started off the show mentioning, it is um, it is a sad day uh, here in town as um, students and staff and people around the city mourn the loss of Steve Elms, who passed away suddenly yesterday morning. Um, and uh, I, wanted, I wanted to reflect on it a little bit. I do have uh, you know a personal connection with Steve. He was a friend of mine, and um, uh, we worked together on The Nutcracker. For the last four years, mm. we've worked together on the Nutcracker. Coming up every year, we you know spend weeks and weeks rehearsing and and just kind of hanging out and uh, and doing the show. And uh, he was a lovely man, and always had something for you on the stage. Uh, was 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 my my favorite part of him. We would always we would hang out before the show, and um, you know because our our part in the show was not very long. You know we're on stage for about fifteen minutes, but we'd hang out uh, from call until the time, and then we'd sometimes hang out after the show for a little bit. And just, you know, just chat, everybody just hanging out. And he was just, he was a lovely man. And um, by all accounts, a wonderful, wonderful teacher. We've heard so much from so many people about how, uh, how uh, just uh, a fantastic teacher he was and a person um, over the last day. And it's, um, it's been, it, it, it's obviously been tough. It's, it's been, it's been tough for the people close to him, obviously. Um, and yesterday I, I came to pick up Phoenix for lunch and she came out just kind of had this look on her face and I was I you know obviously said what's wrong and she told me and um so took the rest of the day off and just kind of just kind of reflected and just mm -hmm. kind of like kind of dealt with the the dealt with what we needed to deal with which for her because she's the director of the Nutcracker and the, the director over at Bella Dance Academy was trying to figure out okay what do we what do we do now uh we we need to talk to we talk to people close to him, try to figure out kind of what happened, but also like what, how do we move forward? He was, his part in the show was uh, Mr. Silberhouse. He's the president. So he, it's like the house that we're in is his, he's kind of the main, the main part in that, in that adult party scene, we call it. And um, do you, you know, do you tell the kids? Do you, right. do you what do you do? Yeah. Um, so logistically, it just it becomes it becomes very uh, it becomes very stressful. Obviously, yeah. not as stressful uh, as what's going what his family's going through. But this is you know our personal experience with it was just, um, yeah. What do you do? And then the, we found out that the school was telling the kids. So we we're okay. Like okay, they they know we're going to mention it at the top of this rehearsal because it was stress mm -hmm. rehearsal last night, and um, just kind of move forward. I mean, because that's all you can do. It's tough um, when it's one of those situations where like practical solutions take such a back seat yeah absolutely you but know. they have to be thought of at the same time so yeah. you're, you're thinking of these like okay i have to replace this person we have to move this around because the old adage goes the show must go on um and it seems it seems tactless it seems you feel bad yeah not being like oh my god 
But the, oh my God, like what is his family going through? Uh, uh, we're going to miss him, and uh, those things are all going on. But at the same time, and all the teachers were going through that as well. So yeah. we, you know, uh, she was fielding calls from parents, uh, superintendents, principals, just like okay. And she's she's asking what she should do because right. like you know this is this is one of these things where it's just like there's no real right way mm-hmm. to do these things mm-hmm. it's just like okay how do we fix i mean there is a right way but i mean it's it's hard to know there's definitely a the wrong moment. way there's but, definitely a wrong yeah. way yeah but there, it's hard to know sometimes when you're in the moment so you lean on those people that have that training yeah you know teachers yeah. superintendent they they've got the training to know like this is how we handle it this is what we tell the kids this is how we're going to move forward yeah um <clears throat> yeah, especially and as you alluded to it, obviously the Nutcracker is a production that always yep. has a lot of uh, a lot of youths of Done. various ages involved, and yep. y- you know you you don't necessarily know how yep. any all of them have been equipped to deal with That's right. situations like this. And then like the smaller kids don't really don't really understand. The right. Older kids know, and some of them have been taught by him, and um, and uh, by all accounts, again, uh, a wonderful teacher, yeah, and a wonderful person. Um, you know, he, uh, he, his partner, Megan Holzapple, friend of the show, uh, friend of the cabin, uh, they moved to Anubik in 2000, had a, had a, had a kid, Michael, and, um, and have been living in the North ever since. Hmm. And has, he, you know, always dreamed of the teacher. You can find a story at cabinradio.ca, just kind of read it up, and, and we'll be following up with a, a more kind of ex- extensive tribute. Um, in a small town, though, obviously, like deaths, you know, they, you can feel them a bit more. Yeah. A teacher, though, so, someone that's kind of connect, part of the connective tissue, which teachers are. Yeah. Um, you feel it. It kind of reverberates out. Because all the, all the kids, you know, even if they haven't been taught by him, will feel it. The teachers, of course, will feel it. Mm-hmm. And teachers are a huge part of a community like this. Absolutely. And um, so there's a, there's, there's a missing piece now that, is, that cannot be replaced. Um, and, um, you know, to be kind of with him on stage only two nights ago um it's it's very it's a it's it's odd i mean there's no way that, i don't really know how to you know it's 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 sad it's heartbreaking mm-hmm. it's and it's just uh, yeah i mean i don't I really, I really don't know what to say i mean i i guess ultimately it's another one of those one of those sobering reminders that you know at, at times like this when when something bad happens it it, it always rings kind of hollow mm-hmm. when we you know bring out the old, uh, the old adage that there's there's always someone who you can talk to. Yeah. There's always someone who's willing to listen. Yeah. Go to them before you know. Don't internalize mm. these feelings. As tough as that is, because that's that's Absolutely. the toughest and part we, of yeah. And we we lose and when we lose people close to us and, and we have that grief, you have to you have to express it. You have to talk to people. Yeah. So uh, we hope everyone out there is uh, hopefully has someone to lean on, someone to talk to. I know the teachers, uh, the, the schools will have uh, counselors and other teachers who, who are trained in that kind of thing to, to uh, help any kids that need it. Um, <clears throat> and last night we had a little, you know, we just had a little toast to him in the, in the dressing room. Um, not a toast, but a toast nonetheless and just kind of talked about, um, you know, we, we, I don't think we really we talked about it much. A few of us that have worked with him over the last few years have talked about it a little bit and just... Um, yeah, just trying to you know trying to figure out how to how to best kind of move forward with this right now, this thing we have to do uh, the Nutcracker show this this uh, weekend. Um, but uh, we know that he enjoyed it, and uh, that's why he came back every every single year to do it. And uh, we will miss him. And um, again, please, if you can or have someone to talk to, please talk to them or you know pull someone aside and you know let them know that it's okay to talk to you as well. Um, uh, go to cabinradio.ca for that story, and you can find it on the Facebook page as well. And like I said, we'll follow up with a more uh, uh, in-depth tribute to Steve. Um, rest, rest well. Rest well. The Mornings at the Cabin podcast. This morning's uh, show brought to you by the NAC, the Northern Arts and Cultural Center. And you are invited to NAC's 35th anniversary celebration coming up on December 7th in the lobby before the concert with Kofi Hayford and the New York International Vocal Ensemble. Enjoy complimentary appetizers from Dancing Moose Cafe, by uh, music by uh, Carmen and Pat Braden, and champagne. Celebration starts at 6 p.m. That's right. It also says hors d'oeuvres from Flavor Trader. So... Both? Hmm. Huh? That's that's a nice addition. Or maybe someone copy and pasted this thing. Maybe. I have no idea. But the fact of the matter is, the NAC, NAC is turning 35, and you are invited on December 7th, starting at 6. Concert starts at 7.30. Promises to be an excellent show. 
Um, if you've ever listened to any Kofi Hayford, which I have, wonderful stuff. Wonderful I it, well, I, I, as soon as I heard he was on the on the bill, I I took a listen. I took a listen. Okay, I was just looking at a different write up we had of it and said Hayward. I was like, are you no, just it says Hayford. making stuff H-A-Y-F-O-R-D. up? H a y f o r d. No, it's definitely Hayford. Okay, good. I think we should put a call in about those hors d'oeuvres, though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it says uh, in the tweet. It says uh, appetizer, dancing moose. On the little thing there, it says flavor trader. Either way, you're getting some good eats. Next, 35th anniversary celebration, December 7th. Go by and check it out. NACNT.ca for uh, ticket info on the Kofi Hayford uh, um, concert. But I don't think you have to go to the concert to get those hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> Come and celebrate. <laughs> just got to head to the lobby. That's right. Just head okay. to the lobby, get some, get some hors d'oeuvres, <laughs> hors d'oeuvres, as we say, and listen to some music by Carmen and Pat. I love it. All right. Um, yesterday, some other news. Uh, that uh, kind of rocked Yellowknife. Uh, Thornton's is closing down. Planning to close down after the Christmas season. Uh, they made their announcement on their Facebook page yesterday morning. Um, and uh, obviously to the chagrin of many. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of people. You guys live right across the street. I know it's one of Nicole's favorite places. Was she, is she still working there? No, she no, hasn't okay. worked there for a while. But, okay, I didn't um, think so. Yeah, it's it's funny. It's, it's, it's yeah, we literally... Great place for brunch? Yeah. Yeah. Great, like... Oh. Such a good. That's going to be what we miss the most right. for sure. Yeah, those, absolutely. Those Sunday morning brunches at Thornton's. Bottomless oh, mimosas. Yeah. yeah, it's uh, yeah, they've been around for I don't even know how long. A now, long time. But uh, they have closed down before and reopened. So what so, they used to do was they fingers used, crossed. Yeah, they used to like shut down for the summer. Yes, and uh, and then they would reopen That's right. in because uh, well, they were running wildcat, October. weren't they? Yeah, they had the Wildcat yeah. contract for a couple of years, yeah. so yeah, they were doing that. And then this past summer, of course, they built. Uh, they had a big sidewalk patio, yes. which was uh, amazing, just beautiful, wonderful. Yeah. I would call it the top temporary patio uh, in the city. Wow, that, that includes Birchwood, includes Black Knight, which turned into quite a lovely little spot as well. But for whatever reason, I was drawn to that one. Yeah, yeah. Well, I know a couple times I was. Uh, I was walking to work and I'd see Graham who was uh been who has been running Thornton's for the yes. last couple of years. And uh you know, he was just putting like the finishing touches on the, the outside patio and uh he's like, Hey, I heard you talking about Black Knight's patio the other day. Why not shout out for the Thornton patio? <laughs> I wanna shout out for my patio. He's like, Graham, look at this thing. You don't need a shout out. That's this right. Patio is gonna sell itself. That's right. And then I think that next morning I gave him a shout out. <laughs> well they had a, a highly day. successful patio season. And their busiest time of the year is Christmas season. So they wanted to go on a high note. They're not going to be reopening in 2020 is what they're saying. Um, it's it's not uncommon, obviously, to see things close down in Yellowknife. It's very tough to have a business here. Uh, even tougher when you're a high scale, uh, an upscale restaurant um, yeah. to, to make it work. Mm-hmm. Um for the you know for, for for prices, but also it's a small space. You just don't have a big market to draw on, and every and. Uh, Honestly, I'm just gonna say it. Um, th- this this makes people who are pushing for big box stores and for more more um, uh, uh, franchise chain restaurants chain restaurants yeah. up here. They're just like good, one less thing to worry about. Mm. And yeah, I, not, do you think anyone really feels that way? I hope I hope not. But that's how I feel right now about mm. the push for big box stores and more chain restaurants. Right? I don't I don't love it. Yeah, I don't love it. I would rather see. More people here doing it themselves, having independent restaurants, uh, local restaurants, rather than like a Montana's coming into town. Yeah. Something like that. I would much rather have that. And I mean, I, I don't know personally that this this situation with uh, Thornton's deciding to, to close its doors, I don't know that it's necessarily like they tried their best, but they couldn't make a go of it sort yeah. of thing. Uh, I'm sure if you know if you see Graham or yeah. uh, or Luke out out and about, as as you will often here mm-hmm. in Yellowknife, uh, you know, I, I'm sure you could feel free to ask them about it, and they'll, yeah. they'll tell you exactly what the situation was. But obviously, you know, on the Facebook, it's it's a kind of a like a vague ish yeah. telling of what's going on. Basically, just spreading the news. Hey, we're closing as of the new year. Yeah, thanks to all our customers. You know, the the, the standard kind of press release, mm-hmm. if you will, that you put out. But I I think that it was kind of more of a case that it was just, and we all know that running running a restaurant, it just. You don't make a ton of money. And it's incredibly stressful. I think they were doing okay. But they were just like... But they just, yeah, okay. didn't have a life, and fair essentially. And then, and, but, but then that becomes another issue as well, is that you're, you're, yeah. running, it, you're running it on such a, either a sh- such a shoestring, or you don't have staff, 
that it just it just takes over your life and then yeah. you're just like I want to do I I would like to maybe move on to something else. And I think this. I think that was more or less what yeah, it absolutely. was for uh, for and, I mean, and again, no, nothing against people who uh, run and own franchises here in the city. There are, there are some wonderful local people run one running franchises here in the city that mm-hmm. are doing incredibly well. Yeah. And and offer great service and offer great products. Absolutely. I yeah. just I I'm just one of these people that is like I don't really need a Starbucks in town. Yeah. We have five coffee shops. Yeah. You know, I I I would love a Wendy's. We don't need a Wendy's. We can get a, we can get great burgers in this town. We got burgers. We got burgers. Yeah, we're okay. we can get a great burger at the Independent. <laughs> a great burger. great burger at the Independent. I had one of those the other day, and I want to know what Elijah Forget was on about. What that was the, he on about? The, the the chicken burgers. Oh, they are fantastic. Really? They're like under five bucks, and they taste just like those uh, those uh, 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 Wendy's ones. Okay. Oh, they're decent. Burgers. All right, they're decent. You have to check that out. What, Can't get a, a good chicken burger at Thornton's. Probably why it's leaving. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, so it's it's sad to see a, a, a restaurant close, uh, especially one that's been around for so so long. Yeah, uh, and and offered some uh, some wonderful food and um, a nice little bit of ambiance as well. We're already scrambling to make brunch plans. Uh, Absolutely. Okay. Why don't you just make it yourself? Well, we will. Oh, okay, good. But like. Ah, uh, you know. I just rarely get to go for brunch, you know? You want to come with us? Nope. Okay. Scenes on the This is an administrative board hearing. You're being accused of intentionally breaching security, violating copyrights, violating individual privacy by creating the website www.facesmash.com. You're also charged with being in violation of university policy on distribution of digitized images. Before we begin with our questioning, you're allowed to make a statement. Would you like to do so? Uh, I, you know, I've already apologized in the Crimson to the ABHW, to Forza Latina, and to any women at Harvard who might have been insulted as I take it that they were. As for any charges stemming from the breach of security, I believe I deserve some recognition from the board. I'm sorry? Yes. I don't understand. Which part? You deserve recognition? I believe I pointed out some pretty gaping holes in your system. Excuse me, may I? Yes. Sir, I'm in charge of security for all computers on the Harvard network, and I can assure you of its sophistication. In fact, it was the level of sophistication that led us to you in less than four hours? Four hours. Yes, sir. That would be impressive, except if you'd known what you were looking for, you would have seen it written on my dorm room window. Scenes from the cabin. Know the movie? Submit your guest to mailbox at cabinradio.ca or send us a message on Facebook for your chance to win gift certificates to some awesome Yellowknife restaurants, including the Monkey Tree Pub and Steak Restaurant, the Woodyard Brewhouse and Eatery, Flavor Trader, Copper House Eatery and Lounge, or Javaroma. Listen to Cabin Radio every weekday to win or download the Mornings at the Cabin podcast. Today's show sponsor is The Knack, Northern Arts and Cultural Center's 35th anniversary celebration coming up on December 7th at 6 o'clock in the lobby before the concert with Kofi Hayford and the New York International Vocal Ensemble. Enjoy complimentary appetizers from the Dancing Moose Cafe. We have confirmation. Music by Carmen and Pat Brayden and Champagne Celebration starts at 6 p.m. Concert starts at 7.30. Go to nacnt.ca for ticket info and to talk a little bit more about this wonderful celebration. Uh, Executive Director Marie Coderre with us this morning. Marie, good morning. Bonjour. Good morning. <clears throat> what was that or- word? No, I'm joking. I know what bonjour means. <laughs> I have a little bit of French. I've been, I've been awake for the last, like, 15 minutes, so <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Just going to slip into French yes. whenever it's comfortable. Yes. Uh, 35th anniversary. We're just talking off air, but uh, I think the first time I ever performed on that stage was 1997. So I've been performing on that stage for 22 years. Wow. That's amazing. That's amazing. And it's one of the reasons why uh, I went uh, for the little celebration before the performance mm-hmm. with Pat Braden and Carmen Braden because yes. they both kind of grew up on this stage. Absolutely. And um, like we did a huge celebration for the 30th and we're going to do a huge one for the 40th. But the 35th, we Let's thought it ahead was... Of a, ourselves. Yeah, we, we <laughs> had to do something. So, And it's very important because like there's so much history, so many people who will be uh, at this event who've been part of the NAC uh, event throughout the years. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the part from 6 to 7.30 is free for everybody. So okay. there will be appetizer, music, a little bit of uh, presentations here and there. And we're going to raffle also 
uh, a beautiful painting that we will select. We have uh, an archive of be- beautiful painting uh, at NAG, so we're going to give away one uh, as well during the evening. Wonderful. Yeah, So, uh, and we have a very special show too. Yes. And have a little bit of a story about it. Yes, please tell us about Kofi Hayford. Yeah. So last year uh, for Christmas, I was in New York and <clears throat> my life, I could write a book about that. Sometimes I don't know how I end up in those situations, but <laughs> I got an invitation to go to Alice Kendall uh, randomly. Uh, Alice Kendall is one of the founder of the Metropolitan Opera. She's mm. like 80 years old, multimillionaire. Her dad was uh, like owning half of New York in real estate. He was dealing, he was a competitor of Donald Trump's dad. So just to give you an idea. So I wasn't <laughs> competitor, by, competitor, not yeah, 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 competitor, competitor, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. competitor. So I got invited to go to her penthouse <coughs> All right. on December 31st. So hey, hey. I went and it was pretty intimidating. Um, my mom is from a very poor family. My dad is from the bourgeois of Montreal. So I can navigate in both worlds really easily and I'm happy in both worlds. So I put my smile on and I went with confidence. I was greeted by the uh, security agents to take me to the elevator golden <laughs> walls with wow. anyway Good so Lord. i entered inside this penthouse and i realized pretty quickly that it was also a private opera concert with all the best opera singer in new york what yeah and and God. a lot of people like uh, lawyers o- owning firms uh, society on the fifth avenue like I was a little bit overwhelmed, but the good thing, they were all Democrats, so I didn't have to deal oh with pro trump right. colony. So <laughs> I, it was not my world, but at least I could uh, held, like, I could held a, hold a, a conversation with them because, um, like, I work in the arts and, and uh, my dad works in the law world. So I was like, okay, I will uh, pretend that I know a lot of stuff about law, but I don't. Uh, <clears throat> so for the evening, like, I observe, I just listen and I discovered Kofi A. Ford and I went to talk to him because I was blown away by the, his talent and his second best quality is, is so humble. So one mm. He's from Africa originally. His parents are diplomat and he grew up in New York. And he's one of the rising star opera singer. And when I talked about Nak to him and I like to me I was in that penthouse and I said, Ha ha, Nak thirty fifth, we're gonna do something. I did the math equation pretty quickly, <laughs> right? Yeah. So I put my artistic uh, director hat pretty quickly. So I did some lobbying and blah blah blah. And uh, Kofi, w- I talk about NAC and what we do in the communities. And uh, I said, hey, it's the 35th. And would you like to come next year? And would you mind to design a show with uh, your closest friend in the circuit to uh, to uh, have a unique show for just specifically for Yellow Knife? And he put together like six ar- artists from six different p- countries. And he will be touring in the small communities with me and other people um, during the next like I pick him up t- uh, tonight. Actually, we are going to Norman Wells, Inuvik, Hay River, Fort Simpson. Wow! And but with that group, it's gonna be a specific show for Yellow Knife. So it's gonna be a Christmas treat. Uh, I told them like it's close to Christmas, and it's gonna be a little bit of gospel too and classical music. But sometimes, like if you look at the the program, it's amazing. They will be singing at, as duet, as the all assembled together. Sometimes a uh, solo. Act sometimes just the pianist will play, but like yes, it, the songs that that are like uh, piano Christmas holiday piece, Christmas song composed by Vita. Uh, there's all I want for Christmas is you. Like it, there's so many, many, many. Uh, like yeah, so it's a, tr- a Christmas treat coming up, and also since it's the first time, the ensemble is maybe it's the start of a, a group that will perform in the. In other places, after they are pretty strong singer. If you read their bios, it's pretty impressive. From Russia, Venezuela, Africa, U.S., blah blah blah. Wow! So, wow! Yeah, very nice. So, yeah. So at the end of this evening, I was pretty uh, exhausted to be in that world. So oh, I ended up in an Irish pub eating food at a fruit tr- food truck in the That's street. That's very nice. Like yeah, yeah, so, so yeah, this is uh, the, the the mom. The side of my mom, family resurgence or resurgence <laughs> at the end of the evening. I said, "Okay, let's go." You had to street. balance it back yeah, out a little. Let's go yeah. street style. Yeah. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I would have yeah. taken the silverware out of that place. Yeah. Uh. But th- this evening is a conclusion of my December thirty first, two thousand eighteen. That was absolutely like 
surreal. <laughs> but I'm pretty proud of that show, and I hope uh, it's almost sold out, by the way. So oh, wow. You guys, Very beautiful. Yeah, Great. yeah. Hurry up. <laughs> okay, hurry up. MacNT.ca for tickets. It's almost sold out. That sounds incredible, and thank you for sharing that story. That's no problem. pretty amazing. I just feel like there's a bit of follow-up to that story. So yeah. take us back. You're in New York <laughs> around Christmas time. Yeah. Penthouse, golden walls. Yes. Golden toilets. Kings and queens surrounding you. Yes. yes. And the mini Marie from Quebec City slash living in Yellow Knife. <laughs> and you're talking, shows up. <laughs> you're talking to Kofi Hayford. Yes. And you say, hey, do you want to come do the NAC 35th anniversary show in Yellow Knife? Okay. What's his next question? Okay. Where's Yellow Knife? Uh, yeah. Ah, <laughs> but yeah, you know yeah. what? Um, Where the I have hell to is say, that? <laughs> as much as it was an interesting night, it was pretty snobbish too. Very, so people were no, not, well, yeah. no, no way. I'm, I'm on Fifth Avenue <laughs> in the aristocracy of New York. Like, but the people were only talking to me the day I was telling them my job title, mm. and ah. I found it so annoying. But. Kofi Ford was the only one very grounded, I found, mm, with uh, okay. with actually his girlfriend who's coming, Victoria. Um, and he started to... Uh, he's from Ghana in Africa, mm. and he traveled a lot, and he's all about sharing his music. He's really, really not into this um, uh, very close-minded uh, yeah. classical music world. Mm. Yeah. Yes, yeah. he's really not like that, and, and he, knows how, he knows how to navigate with all the world that... Yeah. So I really appreciate his personality. When I, I, I discovered his personality, I was like, okay, he can come up north and he, re, he will really, <laughs> right, really yeah, appreciate. He'll enjoy this. He, yeah, he will, he, he's so thrilled to go to all the communities. And, and yeah, it's all about sharing his, uh, his music. And it's not, it's not about the, the greed and... and uh, the yeah, prestige. The prestige yes. around yeah. it. It's uh, to... And to um, motivates people or the, we, we stop to the school too huh, when we go to the, the community so I, I just want to expose the, the youth uh, and show them that uh, it's possible to, to be an opera singer wherever you're coming from so amazing yeah. well, if he wants to be here we want to have him absolutely he, yeah if he wants to come by and so he's, nice, he's coming know. he's coming tonight so we will have time actually uh, if you want um, I mean, um, I'd be willing to have him probably on uh, Friday next week or Next when week? he fly yeah. back from um yeah i'll let you know but yes, there is a connection through Let's just you. look at our calendar i mean yeah. we're so busy here on mornings no i think we could squeeze him in yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 well next next week is opera week and we've got opera singers just oh lined that's up right the entire yes. week, how can so. i forget about opera week? perfect <laughs> this is going to work out perfectly um <laughs> i just picture this party and a lot of people just laughing like this <laughs> Oh, oh yellow but you knife. know what? The, the day I decided to go to this Irish pub is when I was talking to that seventy-six years old uh, lawyer who owned a society on Fifth Avenue. He was talk- talking to me about international trading law between Canada and the U.S. Yay! And after thirty minutes, I said, "I'm exhausted." Thirty minutes. We are December thirty-first. <laughs> it's not the right day, so let's go. <laughs> let's go somewhere else. This was not a chat. <laughs> this was a lecture about international uh, trading like law. Snoring time. <laughs> oh so I, I switched that for an yeah Irish pub <laughs> <laughs> and food truck. I'm gonna go get a shepherd's pie. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Marie. Thank you so much for no sharing problem. the story, and thank you for coming by. Yeah. Uh, December seventh is the concerts. Uh, with uh, Kofi Hayward and the uh, International uh, Vocal Ensemble. Uh, the 35th anniversary party starts at 6. You get some champagne, you get some hors d'oeuvres from Dancing Moose Cafe, and get to see Carmen and Pat Braden uh, doing some tunes in the lobby as yeah, well. Yeah, it's going to be jazzy. Uh, MBS jazzy? Five. Yes. Is it going to be posh? Posh mean bad? No, no, posh. <laughs> because posh, posh is... I, thought, I thought you were saying the word French posh because, you know, posh in French means bad. Oh, really? Does it really? Yes. Oh. <laughs> like bad, like it, does it directly translate to bad or is it, what does it directly translate to? Posh. Posh, P-O-C-H-E. Yes. Oh, okay. Posh is bad. Oh, yeah. it's bad. Oh, no. no. <laughs> P-O-S-H. P-O-S-H is in... A uh, little heightened and uh, uh, less uh, than what you were at, which is opulent. Like but, posh uh, spice. No, yeah, like posh spice. I yeah. told yeah. them to go free for all. <laughs> like uh, I trust those g- to those two souls very much. So, Absolutely. Uh, they will come with a, a pretty funky, uh, fun programs, I'm sure. Wonderful. Yes. And uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll mention it again. I mean, t- tickets are almost sold out, so go to nacnt.ca for tickets to that. Uh, it sounds like it's going to be an incredible concert. And if Kofi Hayford wants to come in next week, he can absolutely do that. We would love to have him.
Okay, sounds right. good. Noted. <laughs> Merci. Right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Marie. Uh, like I said, go to NACAT.ca. For the 35th anniversary, which I looked up, is the Coral Jade anniversary. Hmm. So wear, wear green. The Mornings at the Cabin podcast was recorded before a sort of live, thankfully not in the studio, audience. Wheeler, Ollie, and Lecter with you on your Friday morning, and we've got something special. Oh, my Lord. It is special. Oh, the things we do here. My stars. That's it. Um, uh, I, I came in this morning, as as we do every once in a while. We'll come in the morning. There's something already written up on the board, and there's no explanation for it, obviously. Yes. And uh, so we ask, well, what does this mean? And Ollie says, you'll find out. <laughs> so he's done it again. <laughs> This uh, what was on the board this morning was idiot child. So obviously my interest was peaked right off the bat. I was hoping for a some sort of rant about children who are stupid, but uh, nope. Well, idiot children do need the most attention. That's right, as we know. That's right. So let's pay them some attention. Bunch of stupid babies. Um, idiot child is the name of Ollie's band that he was in back in the day. I was going to say, was the name of my band. We, is, have, not, we have not reformed. Is the name. Uh, I, it's very important, very early in this whole conversation to make clear that I did not choose that band name. <laughs> I was very much the Ringo star of the operation. Lean into it, brother. I had absolutely no say in any of the marketing. I was just the guy they found to be their drummer. And therefore, I distanced myself wholeheartedly, as I did at the time, from the band name. The drummer from Idiot Child right here in Studio One. Sigh. <laughs> What's that? I said sigh. <laughs> idiot. And it's all one word. So it's not Idiot Child. It's Idiot Child. Idiot Child. That, that was a big issue for the band in our early mm. days. One getting, word. Getting people points. to understand the, uh, yeah. It the, almost came to blows. They almost the, broke up over this. There's a whole behind the music episode that we're going to do. The grammar of Idiot yeah, yeah. Child. Yes. <laughs> uh, that famous VH1 <laughs> special. Yes. Yeah. Behind so, the dictionary. What we have is the last remaining track ever recorded well, by Idiot Child. say that. I mean, like, the last remaining track for me, because I think I got rid of the rest because they were relatively bad. Uh, but I'm sure someone somewhere, probably a parent of mine, has the full EP. Well, I so, figured this is, like, part of a 15-year anniversary box set of you know, Idiot is, Child oh, that we're going right. to see. 15-year anniversary, yeah. isn't it? Oh, man. At least. Time for a so, reunion tour. Uh -huh. If Motley Crue can do it. <laughs> Surely Idiot Child could pull it off. So I got to university in 2002 and would have been in this band from like yeah early 2003 till the end of 2005. All right. Okay. okay. This took up a okay. lot of your life. So yeah. we, I, my university, when I should really have been studying, I mm. spent, I played soccer three times a week and I played in the band like the rest of the time. Right. We would spend most nights. They had a music room in our little college where like I didn't even have my own drum kit then. So I would just use this terrible, terrible drum kit in the music room. We'd rehearse there every night until somebody would come down and tell us to shut up because they were studying, and then we'd go away. Uh, full on skulk out of the building. Yeah, some it was usually a science student, some sort of yeah, you know, like chemistry or something would come down and be like, a "I have a student. really important exam tomorrow. <laughs> You've been going for a long time." And and we say, sorry, whatever sorry. Whatever it is you're doing is yeah. really loud yeah. in this Can music room. I'm like, well, who put a music room underneath people's residences anyway? <laughs> That's right. So off we would go. And then we would just play all the local pubs around Oxford. We would play all like the different colleges and things like that. Got kicked um, out of there because people were studying. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Stop studying at a pub. <laughs> it's your own fault. Um, and it was, it was a ton of fun. It's the only time I've ever been in a band. I'm not a very good drummer, but I had an amazing time. And at one point, halfway through all of this, we went and recorded in this beautiful old converted barn in the middle of nowhere for two days with a recording technician and everything. Wow. And it was the one of the most fun experiences I've ever had. We remain a terrible band, but <laughs> it was a, a lot of fun hearing us try to act like we weren't. And Very this nice. is the only track I have left. It's called Afflictions. I'm going to suggest <laughs> that it's a full five minutes. It's five minutes. I'm going to tell you right now. Play it out. Put the mics down. Yep. We'll come back afterwards and we will discuss. I don't, I don't know if I can put the mics down. No, I go. will. <laughs> we'll put the mics down. This is Idiot Child Afflictions on Cabin Radio. Morning's at the Cabin.
Okay, first things first. Uh, no, mornings at the cabin. We are all electro with you. That was uh, the single "Afflictions" from Idiot Child, uh, Ollie's band uh, when he was back at university. That was, I mean, for all the times, every friend that I've ever had, it's like you should listen to our band. Yeah, listen to this. Listen to this track. It's great. Hmm. That was probably one of the strongest. Yeah, yeah, that was good. Most times, people you know play them your, your band. You're like, this is great, and you look at your watch, and you're like, this is three more minutes of this, huh? <laughs> And I was—I I admit I was skeptical. Yeah, you looked when it at this. Five, five minutes, and I was long. like, "Good yeah. God!" Yeah, there's some real, like, yeah, very much. You—you uh, you mentioned a muse. Yeah, very much muse. Mm-hmm. Very sound. He, the lead singer sounds like uh, the lead singer from Muse. There's yep. a little bit of Radiohead influence in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know. Other bit. than that last minute and a half, it was all pretty tolerable. I thought. Yeah, <laughs> that last minute and a half, <laughs> not so much. I, I'm inclined to agree. Like <laughs> the last minute and a half. Yeah, I go along with that. I'd say a bit much, but. You know, strong finish though. It's getting a ho 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 from a Lawson. Hey, so, it's getting a ho ho ho. Add go. it to the Christmas list. Very I think nice. if we just add some sleigh bells to that, we could yeah. add it to the Christmas. Yeah, panel. there we go. <laughs> Honestly, Overdub some sleigh bells in there. Playing that now, I feel like yeah, this <laughs> we were all right. Yeah, we were all right as a band. We were maybe yeah. not about to take on the world, but as bands go, I feel like I could listen to that and I don't shrivel and cringe. No, yes. quite the way I've probably thought i would do at the time nor should you nor should you. yeah that was a, that was pretty good that was yeah. that was tight and we, the recording sounded great there's a lot better we, than i was expecting we ended every set <laughs> Definitely say that every live set ended with a cover of getting jiggy with it a ghostbuster <laughs> <laughs> okay well that takes it down a peg yeah that takes the whole with thing cowbell. down a peg with cowbell with i cowbell. don't know a lot that of it does i think it that's does. pretty great it was a full on rock getting jiggy with it getting jiggy with it da, 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 da. oh my god it was it was pretty good it that's, was pretty. It was a lot great. of fun. Drunk. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> that's all the great. good, uh, all the good vibes you got from the crowd. Gone. But, but this is the only piece of of music you have remaining. So there the was Idiot six Child tracks Library. that we recorded, mm. and the EP had the EP had six tracks. This is the only one for whatever reason that I have kept. So uh, as as a digital file, right? So I imagine somewhere in it, like a cupboard. Probably my mum or dad has the original CD. Babs, I send us the CD anymore. right now. Babs. I, you're listening. I have Send us no, that CD. I have no idea where that CD is. But somebody somewhere will have the other five tracks. Now, I imagine the reason that I kept that track is that's probably the one I thought was passable enough to keep for the rest of my right. days. The chances are the other five are worse. Did you record your rock version of Getting Jiggy with it? No. Damn it. If you want, we could just build up like a bit of a legend of Idiot Child and just say that the rest of the tracks were lost in a great fire. Yep, they, they were. This fact, they is the only were. one that remains. I, I probably did literally burn the rest of that CD <laughs> in order to make sure that they couldn't be heard again. So, yeah, uh, that is that is the legacy of Idiot Child. Wow. Is afflictions with Dave Parsons on vocals, not that one. Richard Harland on lead guitar, Nikki Dean on bass, and me on drums. Nikki Dean. Get them, Dean, up, get them up here, for goodness sake. Star, Reunion man. tour. Yes. I have not spoken to any of them in a decade. Oh, now's the time. Ooh. Now's the time to pick up the phone. Hard feelings remain. That's right. The idiot yep. child That's 15 right. years later. <laughs> Couldn't tell you where any of them are. I would be amazed. It would be the most fun thing in the world. If you want to go ahead and behind my back organize an idiot child reunion <laughs> in Yellow Life, I will gladly open the cabin stage next year. All at right. Folk on the Rocks. All right. Let's do it. I'm okay. Thanks for listening. Check out more from the show at cabinradio.ca and by following the Mornings at the Cabin Facebook page.